Hello there. So, I like cars. Especially uh, ones like the classic Ford Mustangs over here. So, if I want to race those in an awesome Xbox game, what game would I choose? Well, I'll give them the Forza series, obviously, but which one? The answer, Horizon 4. It's out now, if you pre-ordered it, for on the Ultimate Edition like I did. It's been out for two days, in fact. For everyone else, it comes out two days' time, October 2nd. But I'm going to give you guys a little uh, early thoughts review on the game. See, how, see what I think it is so far, and uh, do I like it or not? The answer is yes. Anyway, this is my early thoughts review on Forza Horizon 4. So let's start off with this. If you guys don't already know, if you guys have been hiding on a rock for the last, uh, I guess, since mid-2000s, and you guys don't know what the hell Forza is, it's a Microsoft-built racing franchise for Xbox One and PC only. Uh, it will never be getting a release on the PS4 or any PlayStation or any, anything that's not a Xbox or a PC, as far as we know. So if people want to play some Nintendo Switch, fuck you. Go console yourself with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and cry over a fucking Mario statue. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Anyway, um, I'll go back to the whole, my whole point about Mario here in a bit. But yeah, so this is Forza Horizon 4. Anything, so Forza Motorsport, uh, which is the main series, I guess you could say, the longer running series, it's a track-based racing series, circuit, stuff like that. The Horizon franchise, however, um, it's another, it has slightly less cars because it concerns itself with mostly road-legal vehicles. Um, is an open-world experience in places so far listing as Colorado, um, France, Australia, and now in uh, the UK. So, yeah, we've had a lot of great places so far, but how does Horizon 4 hold up to the other three in the series? Well, we're about to find out. This is my Horizon 4 review. Early thoughts. Okay, let's talk graphics. So, hmm, do graphics matter? In some cases, not so much. In some cases, yes. So, like, in games like Mario Kart, where there, there are fixed carts. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying Mario Kart's bad. It's a great game. It's done right. It's a fun party style game. But they don't have to render actual cars that look like they actually should. They have to render uh, cartoon based go karts. So, in a game where you want, like Forza, where you have actual cars you want to be pixel perfect, do graphics matter? Yes. And let me say this. The video clip you guys just saw was in 720p because they used my Xbox One drive to record it, and I'm taking minimal space here, so I had to go for a lowest quality setting. But even on my really kind of old, like it's it's my TV is like six years old now. It's only does 1080p. It looks gorgeous. Um, I guess the, the most part series always has slightly better graphics. It has a renderless area, but this game is amazing. It's definitely a step up from three, which is obviously a step up from two. Because uh, Horizon 3 came out in 2016 when the Xbox One um, got the graphics boost with the S and was still kind of finding its footing. And so now we're kind of here with the X generation and the S and the One. I only have the original One. I don't have the X or the S. So maybe I will in the future. I don't know. Anyway, the graphics so far in this game are brilliant. It's not had trouble rendering anything, loading anything. And everything it renders is perfect texturing. Especially if you go to the pause menu or the auto share menu or the house menu, which I'll explain a little bit about later on. Houses and things like that. Which is a new mechanic, which is like a slightly new mechanic in the game, I guess. Uh, if you go to like those menus, or especially if you like go into paint and stuff like that, every single car looks like they should. Perfect. Even down to stuff they have from the 1930s in the game, which I'll talk about new car editions as well. So, I mean, the graphics, while not exactly as great as Motorsport, are fucking insane. They're amazing. And while games like the new Call of Duty Black Ops 4 might get more sales due to the fact that it's got. Uh, Battle Royale, Fortnite. No, no, no. Excuse me, there's a Battle Royale game in MLB The Show 16, so you can fuck off with that Fortnite shit. <laughs> yeah, there actually was. There's a baseball Battle Royale, baseball Battle Royale style game in that one. It's been called Battle Royale Mode. Um, anyway, uh, because it, it, it pub, like, uh, it's like games like PUBG and Call of Duty will sell more now because they have Battle Royale, and they're appealing to the, the they're po like, I guess they're kind of appealing to the masses. Forza uh, sticks to people who want to play a great game with great graphics and really enjoy some fun, fast-paced racing. That's my review on the graphics. Let's move on.
due to several <coughs> legal issues, I don't actually have any uh, clips of the radio to talk about here. It's the basic stations in the other game, Space Arena, uh, Hospital Records Radio, Timeless, which is a nice classical music station. Honestly, Forza is the only time I ever actually consider listening to classical music. Um, Horizon Pulse, stuff like that. Very, very basic ones. Um, it, most of it is like pop with some rock stuff on it. Uh, not my favorite genres, especially not pop. Uh, French pop is cool. American pop is shit. Really, really shit. Um, and so I just honestly just use Spotify, which you can run in the background of your Xbox and on the PS4. Nintendo Switch, try to keep up. Come on. People want background music. Come on. Hurry up, Nintendo Switch. Get with the, get with the scheme here. Uh, anyway, but like, I'm, able, I'm, able to run, I'm able to play my Green Day in the back of my game. So I'm able to like play Welcome to Paradise with doing some cool tricks and Mustang, stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. So yeah, also, because like, it's stuff up, because like, Spotify um, works in the background, whereas in Horizon 3, you actually had a like, groove music, which is Microsoft's little, honestly, pretty shitty kind of app music type of thing. Um, anyway, a groove music style system. We could actually, it was actually an in-game radio channel. Uh, the Spotify, you can just launch the app, play it, and then go back to the thing. You can play it in the background. You can just uh, push the home button and pop a little mini menu, like skip songs, whatever you want to do. That's pretty cool. Um, honestly, but like honestly, just having like the volume of the car turned down pretty low, having some like nice classic music while driving through fields was great in three. And now with the better graphics and uh, especially with the season, especially like in fall, is uh, is made much better in four. Next up, I will be talking about those seasons. So uh, please enjoy. I'm now going to be talking about the two ways the seasons work in this game. The first way is for a very short amount of time. The second way, uh, second after that is uh, just the rest of the game. So the first time, I'm pretty sure yeah, you start off with uh, just, I guess, summer. I guess kind of no time, really. And once you qual qualify for the fall championship, it'll take you to fall. After you qualify for winter championship, we'll go to winter, and then so on and so on. Once you create a, once you complete a full year, it will drop you into the regular time cycle. So it will be adjusting with the actual year. So it's 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 um it's it's set to England's time because that's where the game is developed. It's developed in Britain. So and also that's kind of where the game is set. Um, uh, well actually not kind of it is it is set in Britain. Um, Great Britain. Egotistical name. Great country. <laughs> Seriously though. Um, so it will actually revolve like that. So right now I think we got as time of the recording we got like three or four days left of the summer season. It'll be fall, and so yeah. Uh, make sure you guys get used to driving with snow tires. You don't need them during the winter season. And so, also, yeah, that's uh, that's how that works. Uh, in the winter season, some areas will only be reachable via frozen lakes that are then frozen over. Um, so have fun with the uh, some some cool stuff like the James Bond vehicles, and, like the ice skis are kind of cool. I should probably talk about that in my review as well. <laughs> Got so much to talk about. This might be a pretty long video. Anyways, so yeah, seasons, really cool mechanic. Red Dead's gonna have that for Red Dead Redemption Two apparently. Got slightly beat out by Forza. Sorry, Rockstar. So yeah, is it a cool mechanic? Absolutely. Is it going to get annoying? Probably not. I mean, as long as you know how to drive in all conditions and handle it, it's pretty easy to drive as long as you have a new vehicle. What's, what's really fun, though, is taking like a really slighty vehicle right, with horrible handling, like an older car, or like maybe the um, Hoonigan Bel Air, in snow, with no snow tires. Accidental donuts for days, boys. Anyway, that's my talk about, well, I guess the seasons of the game. Moving on. Oh, hell yeah, you better believe it, the danger signs from 3 are back. Yes, the danger signs, which are like kind of like kind of like GTA 5 stunt jumps, but even cooler, with cooler cars, and faster, and bigger, and better in every way, that were so prominent in Forza Horizon 3 are back, and they are better than ever. The car that you saw in the video is actually the awesome, fucking amazing Jaguar car from the James Bond DLC, which was a, of course, it's a day one DLC, and is included with the um, Ultimate Edition and the Deluxe Edition of the games. And that's also, one, also that jump was made during the winter season, so I had to have snow tires on for myself not to skid out there. But also, because it's not just on roads, or ice, it's everywhere, you'll skid out, because it's everywhere as cold as slippery, and watch out for black ice in winter season. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, that car is awesome, and the jumps are awesome. You basically jump off things, and you try to land without crashing, like if you land on your roof, you, you just failed. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Like, yeah, it says um, yeah, yeah. It says failed, and you won't get the points. And like it does, it does like distance. And like, uh, I think that one that that was um, I I did eventually three star of that. That was only a two star jump. I think three star was like nine hundred and fifty feet. I got like I think it was like what nine hundred and one. 
And so it's a lot of fun because it appeals to not only like people's speed, uh, like love of racing, but also love of doing high fucking octane dangerous shit. And so it's a lot of fun, and uh, all the all the new characters in the game. By that I mean like the announcers, like um, Kira from Horizon Three: Returns of Best Velocity, and there's also a guy named like Alex, and a guy named like Mike Steele, or whatever. They do the, the, some pretty cool voicing, and they are always like, "Oh, so cool." Also, it also kind of lends itself really nicely to the kind of there's a new there's a new there's a bunch of new events that are in the game, the new championships because it kind of mixes um, the three feeling with the two feeling. We'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, anyway, so one of the things, one of the, one of the new events is like a stunt, like a movie stunt driver type thing. And the first thing you'd love to do is get hold of Bugatti Chiron. Sadly, you cannot keep the car, and you get to jump through a windmill. So it's kind of kind of cool. It's a whole like series with that. You get you get to be movie stunt man or, or stunt woman, I guess. Stunt man, stunt woman. Because oh yeah, I'll get to Avatar customization. Damn, there's a lot to talk about in this uh, review so far. Um, and there's a whole shit ton of fucking awesome stuff to do with it. And yeah, Danger Signs are so much fun. They're higher up in the air this time. They're so much cooler. That one is down to the quarry, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, it's one of the longer ones, I think, in the game. But there's some pretty long ones. So uh, yeah, if you guys have the game, if you don't, go fucking buy it because it's awesome. If you do, jump off the highest thing you can with the most powerful car you can and just go flying because it is a shit ton of fun. Okay, I do not actually have any picture of my current character in the game. Um, there's been ones in the videos that I think will pop up throughout this main video. Uh, I got my character that originally was a male, then was a female, uh, now the male again. Uh, I've just been experimenting with all different character looks, seeing which ones I like. Um, I think almost all of them was wearing the James Bond classic white tuxedo one, though. Well, the James Bond DLC, which not only unlocks clothing, another thing I need to talk about. Actually, I'll just bring it up in this, this little segment here, because it's part of the Avatar customization thing, I guess. But also unlocks vehicles, of course. Um, so anyway, yeah, Avatar, Avatar customization. The last game became a... In Forza Horizon 3, one of the newer things is you get to choose your Avatar looks like from a range of different characters. Um, that's not changed here. And also you get to choose a name. I just kind of went with Roadworks. I want to pick something cool. I'll eventually change that later, probably to Skylar again or to... Um, I saw something called Agent Phoenix, which I want to choose, actually, now, because of my, you know, whole Operation Phoenix thing. Um... And Agent California is so bringing together an Agent Phoenix. Agent Phoenix. Agent Phoenix. Sounds cool. Sounds cool. I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> um. Anyway, so yeah, in the wheel spin, uh, which is another thing I'll talk about. Um, when you when you level up or after certain events, you'll be able to spin a wheel and get prizes. You can get cash, car horns, cars, or oh yeah, dance moves. Another thing you can get your character to do dance moves sometimes. Uh, and as well things to say, but you can also win clothing from really cool jackets to fucking sandals to uh, duck boot Wellington galoshes. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of things you can win a lot of different clothing for your character. I might make a James Bond suit with fucking Wellington boots. It's hilarious. Make it look stupid. Make it look cool. Uh, give them like aviator shades. It's awesome the character customization not as much as like gta gta is like over the top type stuff this is just enough because you don't really see your character that often you can't control them out of the car they're, they're standing next to your car after the race or whatever before like before or after different events you see them in some cutscenes, so it's not really worth it go ahead and do a full-on coding for this stuff but um what they've put in there what they've considered the fact that we actually want some of that cool customization for our outside of the car character is pretty cool i like it i like it like that and so they've actually done a pretty good job with it so far Okay, so what you just saw right there was called a wheel spin, um, and the, oh my god, the amazing look it has, I fucking love it, it looks awesome now, it looked pretty cool, and it looked okay in 2, it looked awesome in 3, and then 4 looks fucking brilliant, so cool to look at, because uh, your character's standing there next to a card that you were in when you got the wheel spin, this one, my character's still female in this one, um, anyway, point being, uh, you can spin it, as I said before, you can get, like, a car horn for your car, I want that Windows XP shutdown horn so badly. It's literally the Windows XP shut off noise. It's brilliant. Um, and so also you get like car horns. I got the Lotus. I think it was, was the XCGS in that one. I'll have to go back and check the video. But I'm pretty sure it was, like, it was a Lotus XCGS. Or like a Lotus something. So you can get really cool cars out of it. Um, I'm also going to talk about the Super Wheel Spin in a minute. Which is I think the cool one of the coolest additions to the game. And one of the things I want to get a lot more of. I'll probably be spending a lot of time trying to get. So um... 
yeah, it's really cool. Uh, it's maybe whenever you level up or complete certain challenges and certain championships, it, it's just, it's a reward. It's a really cool way to get some extra cash to spend. I I like to get my cash above seven hundred if I can. Seven hundred thousand that is not seven hundred dollars. You absolutely broke. However, I'm trying I'm trying to save it, save it for the Shiron, which is actually two million three hundred thousand. I think. Actually, you can get the uh, McLaren Senna, the cover car, which is amazing for only a million. I want that Bugatti Chiron, so I'm gonna save it for that one. Uh, so yeah, it's a really cool way to get some cash and some cool things out of it, and it, hey, it looks awesome. Oh yes, the super wheel spin. This is awesome. So yeah, what you guys just saw was called a super wheel spin. It's not just three wheel spins in one, because it's not you, get, you don't have to get them all in a row. You get all the things that you highlight when you win. No, it's not like a slot machine way to get them all in a row to get it or like shit like that. You got you get every single thing from each category that you got. So I got those three. Um, you guys said cash, uh, car horns, dance moves, cars, and clothing. I won a I think it was was the the deluxe type two. Um, which is a kind of a Volkswagen van type thing, but don't call it a van because it's actually not called the Volkswagen van. It's a different thing entirely. But yeah, Volkswagen is back in the game. Yay, cool. Uh, Forza Edition. So it's a cool little boost like that. Um, and the way you get these amazing things. Oh yeah, also it's not just more, not just three things. Also, you can get better, like there are better rewards for each category too. Um, so I've gotten uh, out of it cars such as the Alfa Romeo 33 Stradale, which I've been trying to get. It's always up in the 10 millions. Of, so it's like, it's like 10 million uh, credits, or I'm going to say dollars, dollars in the last um, two games. It's super fast to modify. I've also got a Porsche 19, a uh, Spider, another super fast, awesome car. Also, Porsche no longer DLC in this game. Woohoo. Um, I've got a BMW i8. I've got some new trucks in the game, some pretty cool shit out of it. Um, as well as, well as at least when I started the game, at least a million dollars. So when I pre ordered the game, I got the ultimate edition, you get, I think you get 10 free super wheel spins as well as I think another two for being VIP and two whenever DLC pack comes out as well as I also got I think uh, 10 more for being level Forza Horizon 3 for level 500 club woohoo yeah hit level 500 Forza Horizon 3 and you get rewarded for it in this game also probably going to be releasing a mystery car they don't they won't tell you what it is they're going to be giving you out a mystery car at some point in the in your game experience within the next few months so uh, hopefully it's something pretty cool like a Bugatti or something like that Maybe a McLaren, something pretty cool for hitting level 300 and Forza Horizon 3. But I don't try to go back and do it now because it's done. It ended um, the second um, Horizon 3, sorry, the Horizon 4 um, Ultimate Edition pre order access launched. So, yeah. Um, also, the other way you can get these things is by buying them with Forza Thon points. Forza Thon is another thing that was covered here, I guess. Um, two, two birds, one stone, two things, one segment, I guess. Um, it's a little thing where they, I guess, Forza on the other in Horizon Three works like this. But every week they give you like four challenges: one for XP, one for a car, um, one for cash, one from 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 some other shit. I forget what it was. Um, and so the way it works a little bit differently now. Uh, every day they'll have different events. Also, every season will have different events. If you complete them, uh, you get Forza on cash. If you spend a Forza on stores and like the items of the day, such as right now until the end of the. Uh, fall, so that's right, until the end of the summer season, it's like a really cool Bentley GT Speed, Forza Thon Edition, you can get, and also each, each of the seasonal challenges, which there are three, is worth 130 Forza Thon points that Bentley just talked about, uh, that you have to spend all 300 that you would be able to get um, on that car. Uh, they also have like horns and clothing and stuff like that you can get, or for 150,000, sorry, not 150,000, <laughs> no, for 150, so you can get two of these if you complete all three challenges, you can get a super wheel spin. So yeah, honestly, I don't really need the Bentley, so if I get all the challenges, I'm going to get a super wheel spin. I think it's awesome. It's a really good chance to get some pretty cool stuff out, especially when we first start out. So if you guys don't know about that, go take a look at those. If you guys maybe you have the game, Ultimate Edition, and you haven't realized it yet, go uh, go to your um, Forza on Life, sorry, Forza Life thing, take a look at it, and use them. Get some really cool cars. I guess I must now talk about how championships work in this game. In, let's say, Horizon 2, you got to, they signed you up for championships, you got to go around. After you won the 
uh, in different locations. You get to pick what championship you're going to do in each location. After you won the four, uh, what was it called? It, the Horizon Finale, I think, part one, you were able to uh, choose where you wanted to go. Now, in Horizon 3, you have to go wherever you want, wherever you want to go and just unlock a different festivals by getting fans with them, uh, giving you things to do. Now, it's to it's a mixture of both. It tells you, okay, you gotta go to these locations. You don't have to go to these, but like, they put little starting things in the map. There are more festivals to unlock. I think there's only gonna be one festival in the entire game, but different houses, which I will talk about later on. Probably. Um, and so, anyway, so we, okay, so like, uh, there's, like, say, the road racing series, which is my favorite right now. You can, uh, once you get each level, you, uh, each, like, Every time you win, like, a few races, you go up a level. Like, then, of course, more of those races unlock. So you always have enough to get to the next level. Um, and also, Cross Country Millie's favorite. There's also Dirt Racing. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's how championships work. And then, of course, your, your ultimate goals get build up levels to get to the gold bracelet. The bracelet thing is another thing that was missing from 3, but it was the main, was the main focus of 2, apart from, of course, the Horizon Finale. I was a gold bracelet member in that, and I was also a gold level member in Horizon 3. So, uh, hopefully I'll be able to repeat my feat for a third time. Here we go. Let's think about that until I uh, do it. Thinking, 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 and can I do it in time? Yes. I can absolutely do it. I was rambling there, but I had no fucking clue what I was saying. <laughs> I'm a bit tired. But seriously, I hope to repeat my, my goal and get the gold wristband. Hopefully before Eric does. I'm, pretty, I'm a little bit in front of him, so let's try to keep that up. Talk controls. So, um, one cool thing to note is that they've added extra support for stuff like my uh, Ferrari steering wheel, which is what I took off for two and I had them three. I used a little bit. I actually let Eric borrow it for like three or four fucking months. I didn't use it for a while. Um, I'm using it now because they've added extra support for it. Um, how does the game control? As you just saw there, I drifted. Well, I, went, well, I went pretty goddamn cool drift during a race, in fact, uh, in an Alfa Romeo 33 Stradale. Noise. Fucking on point. No, seriously though, um, the controls are perfect. They're not as realistic and spongy as the Motorsport series. They're a bit like GTA. Actually, no, GTA is, GTA 5 is a bit too perfect. GTA 4 is a bit too bad. Um, I'd like Mario Kart. No, Mario Kart does not even handle like an actual fucking go-kart would handle. Also, no, in this game you do not get a boost from drifting. We play things actual over here. This game might be rated E, but it ain't like Mario Kart. Trust me, you got actual... Uh, more, more, more or less actual things like what happens if you drifted. It slows you down, helps you turn corners, and it looks bad fucking ass. So you will get points for drifting. Um, so yeah, it, it's really cool. The controls are really, really good in this game. Um, of course, there's gonna be, and of course, in difficult settings, you can turn on braking assist, steering assist, traction control, um, all these features that most high tech supercars and even some. Hell, I've been in a Prius with traction control. Actually, the new Prius that we met in Massachusetts. Um, and in Connecticut, that actually has, the new Prius actually has a traction control system you can turn on and off, like a fucking like supercar, so you're like, yeah, I got a new car traction control, cool, it's a Prius, what? So yeah, seriously, it's got, um, a lot of cool things you can change if you think the controls are too easy for you, I like just nice casual controls, I know Eric likes to drive with manual, you can do manual with clutch, I know Eric, I, I just do automatic, basic, whatever, I know Eric likes to drive with manual, sometimes manual with clutch, uh, and all the safety features turned off, like a fucking badass, I'm a... Be more safe because I'm not that great at driving the game. I think it's fun. I drive fast. I like doing drifts, especially um, the drifting elements got much more improved in this game. Uh, and then Horizon Three, there's a lot more open stuff. So you can do more drifting, but um, in Horizon Four, it's it's you gotta be more precise to your drifting. It's like two, there's like not a lot of area to drift. Three is way too much area to drift, and then four is there's just enough area and you gotta be pretty precise with it, uh, which is kind of cool. I got I got the achievement of like what's like um, oh, one, I think it's like over. 190 something thousand point skill change there's achievement for that I got that just back so that was uh, talking to Eric anyway I was just uh, messing around and also I'm going to talk about later on the only not like it's not like only online but it's an online oriented feature of the game so yeah the controls in this game are fucking brilliant I would not trade them for any of the controls in the world you can quote me on that I don't know who you are, but you can definitely quote me on that. So yeah, I don't really know how to represent this one with a video or a screenshot and to talk about it. Um, it's it's it, Horizon Four is an online oriented game. Um, there's a lot more cool online stuff in this one. It, if by default, it will put you into an online active lobby. 
So you can use rewind and stuff like that even if you're online as long as, as long as you're not like in direct race with other people. And then of course every hour on the hour you get a really cool thing. It's like a really cool group event. It's like everyone get these speed traps, get these targets. You get cash for it. It's really fucking fun. Uh, you can always go to Horizon Solo if your internet sucks shit like mine does. Uh, I was able to play with Eric though the other day the first day of the game came out. And of course, it's helpful. Like, oh crap, I can't find this bar find. Hey, can, if someone's already found it, can you just go quickly uh, point out where it is on the map? They'll do it. And they, uh, well, at least my experience say, well. And so I've been able to farm by like bar finds a lot quicker. You can play events with people. Um, every single, almost everything, almost every single event I think in championship is co-op. You can do co-op if you want to, or of course it's solo or versus. So it's kind of the whole co- co- they've improved in the whole co-op realm. That was so cool from three. So yeah, the whole online. Oh, it's almost not. I wouldn't say it's always online, like the new Call of Duty game. Boo! Fuck you, Call of Duty. I want single player, no matter how fucking bad it is. Looking at you, like, the last, like, five Call of Duty titles, actually. <laughs> actually, maybe I don't want single player. Actually, no, no, I still want single player. Titanfall got away with it. You cannot. You. Can. Not. Anyway, no, seriously, though. Um, this game, uh, it, you, you, it, there's no repercussions. Nothing nothing bad happens if you just play online by yourself, or online or offline by yourself all the time. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to play with people. They've made it much more, they've made it much easier to do that. So, uh, go ahead and enjoy some of that awesome online freedom. Head-to-head, one-on-one racing against driver tars, which I'll talk about in a quick second. Uh, in past Force games, and in four has always been a favorite pastime of mine. We don't have a lot of cash. We want to get some just quick, quick cash, like only, like, only like maybe like, and eh, seven thousand bucks in a minute. Just right up behind someone, right to the side of them, press X, and you are in a private head-to-head race. Driver tars are ghosts of other online players that you know or just random people in the game. Um, that drive their cars. And now, thanks to the better AI in 4003 and 4, will drive the way they drive those roads. So I've been able to... And also, you'll see if you've been beaten in your own record and stuff like that. I've never been beaten so far in 4. I've not beaten. Also, it's like, you don't get to drive them. It's just your ghost does it. So, like, it will do it for you. It will drive your, drive your car for you. Drive how you drive. And so, uh, basically, basically racing a... Kind of like extra innings in MLB, the show. You're racing a com- you're, you're, you're basically racing racing a computer-controlled version of another, pl- of another player. Um... And of course, in this game, every single race you win gets you that much closer to leveling up in the street racing circuit. So you don't have to do street racing, street racing actually complete that circuit, which is kind of cool. Um, and of course, you can do as much as you want. Uh, that that one guy in the, the Ferrari Tester Rossa, the Hasty Dog, whatever it was, uh, whoever. Um, oh, I remember he was actually my friend from 2 and now 3 and now 4, I guess. Um, I raced that character all around the map. We did, I think, 20 all star races. I have now 20 all stop wins. That was also another great showcase of my awesome fucking straight line drift in the uh, Alpha Master Dale. 33, uh, Alpha Master Dale. So yeah. Uh, do, you think, do I think they have lost a step in the way they make the head uh, head to head races? Not all. I think it's gone up. Like almost everything else in this game, they've improved it. And it just feels more fluid now. It's, it's Also, the, the, the end screen's always been different. You used to show it like next to the side of the car. The end screen, you couldn't see where you're going, and then you used to show it on the inside of the car. Now it shows it just. Above the car, it looks awesome because it's pasted it pasted the big text when you finish in the environment. So I think that the, so I do actually think the um, heads head races have improved. I really like them. I'm gonna do a lot more of them. I have never lost yet. I never intend to. That's my motto for racing. I have a lot of things in life. Never lose, but don't be a bitch about it. Welcome to Edinburgh, greatest city in the world. Grab yourself some fish and chips, some salt and sauce, and make yourself at home. The thing that's been introduced in 3 and approved upon in 4 is the Forza Vista thing. Now, I got this original Confusers Horizon promo, which was a thing where you used to drive by cars and take pictures of them for cash, which I think was pretty cool, collecting, like, pictures of unique cars. Um, 
They don't seem to. Pa- I, don't, I don't actually think they have that in this game, which kind of makes it a little bit sad. One of the downsides of this game, one of the very few downsides the game actually has. Um, if they do, that's great. If it haven't walked it, oh well. Uh, anyway, this is Forza Vista. You kind of pull up to the little spot and you take a little view of it. It's kind of cool. It comes in a circle, and now they got codes for it. They talk about the spot and the history. I mean, this one is in Edinburgh. So Edinburgh, that's pretty cool. Um, I really think that's really cool. And uh, it kind of also gives you a great a look, lay of land in some cases. kind of like the synchronization points from Assassin's Creed, so they don't really sink you up anywhere. Not really a main point of the game, just thought I should bring it up. Ace, let me put on a dry shirt and I'll be there. Wait, it can't be. That's a Peel P50. I've wanted one of these ever since, ever since I was small enough to fit in one of these. Come on, help me lift it. So yeah, the barn finds are back and they are cool than ever. They've been every single Horizon game, and these they just keep improving each time. Now there's 15 of them. So the way barn finds work, it's something I don't think I've ever seen done in every other game I've ever played, especially not in any other racing game. Is that every so often you get a little call. Not from I think from one of the people in the game, or people I mean, one of the uh, AIs, like what, like either Alex or like um, Kira, but they'll call you up and say, oh, "Hey, there's an abandoned car. You have to go find it. It's in this general area. You have to find the little bunker type thing you saw on the clip back there, and they'll have a car." That one the clip I just showed you guys was the POP50 finding clip, which was uh, the POP50. If you guys don't know about it, it's the smallest road legal car. It's like is it help me lift it? It's literally because you could pick it up and carry it around like a suitcase. Jeremy Clarkson on Top Gear drove it through the BBC news offices, like on set. He like, and then he made his own one. He actually drove him to the library. But point being is that you can just drive it around, and then if oh, you know, oh no, bad parking. Just uh, you think the you think the smart cars easy to park? Just pit, literally get this thing out. It's like a fucking clown car. Get out of it. And you can literally just wheel it down the road like a fucking suitcase. It's not that heavy. So yeah, that's a POP50. I'm pretty sure my outro might be using that as a. I mean, put all the upgrades possible. That stupid thing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I form on almost everything I have. Yes. No, seriously though, a barn finds are really cool. You find some really cool cars. There's a I found like a was it like a Lotus uh, GT kind of, kind of thing. Uh, and they always have really cool cars. There's some nice. There's some kind of cool like uh, there's always some like rally cars. I don't really like that much. I'm really big into rally racing, especially a lot of video games. Um, it's kind of like some basic cars, but every so often it's a really cool car or a cult classic or something stupid and funny like the uh, little POP50 you just saw. So yeah, is it cool? Absolutely. Are they better than they were in previous games? Definitely. Are they here to stay? Let's hope. You have arrived at your destination. Let's talk houses. That's right, you got houses in this game now. Uh, they range from little quaint little cottages, and like also, if you've got the VIP uh, DLC upon release, you also get the uh, you also get a really cool house as well. You, you get like a free house, I guess, with the game when it when it uh. Sorry about that, I've got a little notification map I had to get rid of there. Um, when it when it launches, and of course, like you'll get a house. It's um, it, it's basically you can you can do that. It's I guess. No, not basically. It is. It is exactly like the auto show. Uh, so you can like access the uh, uh, upgrades and stuff. And stuff you know, customize your car, choose your cars, get look at all the DLC you have. Oh, basically, also you can do on the, on the auto show, but in the form of a nice little place out in the country. It kind of takes a point, like the whole point of the other festivals, yes, and the other games, just customize your car and do all that stuff. But now they changed it to houses. And also, I'm playing up there in a lovely little old car, just like a little modified car. Not maybe not even modified, just like, little, just like, just like an old car. Ah, oh, the beautiful graphics. The graphics did a major upgrade, especially in the area with the sparkling sunlight, or just maybe in the snow. It just looks brilliant. So houses, I think, are a really cool idea. I really like them. However, some of them, they do range from cottages to a goddamn castle. Some of them are like 15 million credits, which is like more expensive, I think, than any car in the game. Yeah, that's how that is. I cannot open my eyes any wider, it hurts. You just drove the world's first mega car. How do you feel? (laughs) 
check back with me soon. I think I might get a Ferrari in. So in Forza Horizon 2, for stuff like online races, if you don't have a race in that category that you're in, you could rent a car. Not modify it, not change anything about it, just rent a damn car, mostly in red. Um, <clears throat> and then in Horizon 3, a renting element is completely gone. And in Horizon 4, it's made a reappearance in a very odd way. It's a very kind of campaign kind of story thing, just kind of like the, uh, what is it, the, um, oh, sorry, fucking light bulb there, sorry about that one. Uh, it's like the, I guess you could say it's like the, uh, the stun driver type thing. It's like, it's, it's like a championship kind of. And I think it's called World's Fast Rentals, don't quote me on that, or like, yeah. It's just like World, World's Fast Rentals, I don't know if I get that. Anyway, you, you get a, you grab someone's car, someone who's supposed to be renting a car, and you, uh, basically give it a joyride, you just kind of take it, and you have to buy the business thing for 200,000 credits, not that much, it's t totally worth it. Or I, mean, I think it's actually 100,000. You get payouts for it daily, too. Kind of like the business in GTA 5 story mode that you can buy. Anyway, you try it, you race the end of the goal. That one clip you just saw there was the end of the race, and I did it, Koenigsegg 1-1. to Fucking awesome, I had that car in 3, I want to get it again in 4, because it is fucking brilliant. So yeah, anyway, um, is it cool? Definitely. Is it a really cool feature in a really cool campaign mode? Yeah. Do I like it? Yeah, it's not, it's not as easy as the uh, stuntman ones, but it's still a hell of a ton of fun. So yeah, I'm pretty sure we're reaching the end of this video with one of the final segments, I think, because right now as I'm recording this is at the timestamp, right when I press recording this one is about about uh, 36 minutes, and I'm tired and I want to go to bed. <laughs> I don't want to get up on Tuesday, so there'll probably be there'll probably be a second one where I get farther into the game. I've only been playing the game for probably, maybe probably about 18 hours into the game, not that far. So once I get farther into the game, I want to you know maybe do a second review, maybe get a, a, a deeper thing. But anyway, this is the return of. And slightly different version of the bonus board, the XP board, the fast travel board. So fast travel boards are staying the same. Well, boards that you rent and you smash the car. Um, to, you know, uh, fast travel. No, I mean, it's not instant teleport. Fast travel you can do, you can fast travel festival sites and houses in this game. That also reminds me to talk about how the new skill system works as well. So I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so the way the new, so the way the fast travel thing works, that you smash the boards and you get discounts. So the more you smash, the more discounted your prices on your next uh, trip, all the way around to where I want to fast travel. You click it, you go there. Um, but I think it's really ten thousand credits per trip, which is it, well, not exactly pricey. It will wear you out pretty fast. And so this this way you can smash them and get the discount each time. So anyway, then there's also the bonus boards, which work to give you more. It's just called like I think it's called it's global exposure, whatever it is. You you get, you get more known. It kind of looks like, it kind of looks like a bonus board. It's not really XP anymore though, because it's kind of like a different sort of thing. That's it, I forget exactly what it's called. It works as XP. Um, so eventually you level up. It just helps you level up. It gives you XP and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool. Um, same. So it's not really changed much since the names have changed. But what it does also it looks kind of cooler. And they put them in easy to reach places. They're not on top of fucking impossible jump buildings anymore. Well, the thing in the opening was I think actually a um board XP XP style board which was on top of a no there's no Stonehenge in this game but it was kind of the closest thing we can get to Stonehenge in this game um it was on top of that so yeah that, that, was, bonus, that was a bonus board up there and then the opening of the video okay this is the kind of new and I don't know if I like it or not type of skill tree thing the way they did it in the past so in Horizon 2 you had a thing you just earn skill points you check off each skill as you go you buy them with skill points, so you get it by doing drifting and stunts and stuff like that. Cool, cool, cool kind of thing like that. In Horizon 3, they expand it with more and more stuff. Now, this time it's specific to each car. So, each car is even like, I think, at least eight different skills you can get for it. I mean, each and every, not just manufacturer, but each and every car. So, you have to get a lot of skill points. I think I ended up with several hundred extra skill points in Horizon 3. Because, I mean, there's things you can do, like, uh, it will cost 10, 10 points, it would, you, would not, it's not a permanent unlock in Horizon 3, like, 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 so, oh yeah, next you get double, uh, double cash on the next, um, exhibition race view, which, of course, I just did the Horizon finale, and then got double cash, in already double cash vehicles, I got quadruple the cash for the Horizon finale. No such luck here. Because there's not, there's not, there's not, there's not really appear to be a one master money-making race in this game you can do in Horizon 4. But anyways, the point is that you, I don't really know if I like it or not because I like to be able. I, I'm never really been into the skill thing. In Horizon Three, I kind of only did it when I had a when I already finished everything else. And soon with Horizon Two, which Horizon Two I did by accident because I was playing with Eric and I guess Steven at that point. 
Yeah, it was a long time ago. And I, was, I wanted to catch up with them because I was way behind because I did not get to that game until like four, four or five months after they did. So, um, yeah. So I guess like, I, I, I don't know if I'm a big skill guy in the Force again. So tell me, let me leave a comment below. Let me, let me, let me guys, uh, the, uh, tell, me, tell me what you guys think. I'm sorry, I'm tired right now. It's like past midnight. Ugh. But I'm pretty, pretty recently working on homework, so. Um, yeah, let me, let me guys know if you guys have uh, had any experience with this new skill system. What you guys think about it? I'd like to know from other from you guys. I normally just want to put all my experience on the cars I'm using most, like the uh, the Jaguar, the uh, classic Mustang. Woohoo! Yeah, I think, I think I'm decided probably just put the, all the new cars and all the old cars that are gone into like a separate video at this point. This video is getting pretty long. And I'm pretty tired. I want to go to bed. So yeah, um, let me guys know what you guys think about that. You guys like this, do you guys like the new skill system or not? I'm kind of on the fence about it. Maybe I'll do a more decisive uh, commentary on that one in my next review. So yeah, that's it for this review. I probably missed a shit ton of stuff. All right, I'm probably gonna say, I'm gonna do a follow-up review. Hopefully, leave a comment down below. So remind me what I missed. I'll do that in the next video. Till then, peace out and enjoy a fucking hilarious outro involving a PLP50 with way too much fucking horsepower. Enjoy.